Hi guys, Dan and Jane here from I Measure You on to week five of our research review. Um, so it's Jane's turn this week. So Jane, what paper have you reviewed? So this week I took a bit of a risk. I thought I challenged myself a bit, Dan, and I looked into ballet, something I know nothing about. But I came across this paper, Ground Reaction Forces in Ballet, Differences Resulting from Footwear and Jump Condition. So something where there's lots of application, but I just thought we'd take a look. And yeah, I'll just try to learn a bit, I guess, about ballet and what type of forces go through, because we understand there's lots of forces there. And it's a highly injury prone um, activity uh, for multiple reasons. So I thought, let's take a look at it. Great. Who were the authors, mate? And if you can give us a quick overview of uh, what the study was looking into. Cool. So the author, authors, as you can see there, it's uh, Elsa McPherson. I really hope I got that name right. Uh, John Schrader and Carrie Doherty. So American authors. I believe it was actually a master study. I could be mistaken, but I believe it was Ms. McPherson's master study. So if we take a look at what they wanted to achieve. So they had two goals. They wanted to investigate the max ground reaction uh, forces when ballet dancers land from two jump conditions in three different shoes. The shoes are point shoes, barefoot, and flat technical shoes. What the difference is, I don't really know. All I know is the flat technical shoes are apparently just a piece of material, where the point shoes, I hope I'm saying it correctly, they um, have a bit of cardboard and stuff to them, and they've got what you call the shank at the base of the shoe, Etc., and that's believed to have reduced ground reaction forces. Um, but something very interesting apparently, ballet dancers can go through shoes within one performance, so uh, it could be quite an expensive sport. So, and the two jump conditions I looked at, or once again, I hope I'm saying this right, were assemble and um, grand jeta. So, those were the two. So, if we go back here. So from the two jump conditions, so those are the two different jumps. Okay, okay, cool. And what did they find? So they also, sorry, they also wanted to just take a look at the effect of uh, the specific point shoe characteristics, so shoe age, shank style, which I went over briefly, um, what, they have, what they have on uh, ground uh, forces, ground reaction forces. And they know inadequate dance surfaces, poor technique and footwear, increase the ground reaction forces. Uh, or could and lead to injury because that's what the literature said within ballet. And that there's the hypothesis that point shoes absorb some of the ground reaction forces. And then, so those were the two jumps uh, that they did. And then what they found would be analyzes data. So if we take a look at this, so the Grand Jetta had higher ground reaction forces, the max ground reaction forces. Uh, compared to the ensemble, but something very interesting, this is what I was really interested in to see the footwear, is there were no shoe differences. So, you know, even though they've got the, the shank and all of the support, etc., and the point shoes, uh, they def defuted or refuted, sorry, um, previous hypothesis and studies saying that the point shoes absorb some of the forces. So, <sighs> Very interesting, but and some of those differences could be because the previous literature has been very rigorous scientifically in terms of they've standardized the jump where these authors wanted to move away from that because we know that you know ballet um, already landing on a force plate could be quite difficult for these jumps. Um, but what the other authors tried to do was standardized jump height, standardized how they want it. And there's a lot of ballet terms in there, which I don't understand. But so what these authors did was they're trying to make it as natural as possible. So that's probably, that could be potentially where um, that difference came in. And I fully appreciate it. it's not an easy study to try to do, but so what they would like to do is, so the one issue they could have is each ballet dance had their own shoes. So obviously, and they're all different from, they're actually highly complex. Um, so that is something that, you know, if you're looking scientifically, that could, but as they do note, uh, the authors do note that ballet dancers are very specific with what shoes they wear. 
and it's also be, be a very expensive task to standardize that. Um, so, I mean, that's one of the issues. And the other issue, I, so they did normalize all the ground reaction forces to body weight. The one issue, the one concern I might have would be they allowed them to do as many trials until they felt comfortable. They didn't standardize that, which I feel like they could have potentially standardized that. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's basically the overview of what they found, which I find it, I find it interesting, which also just shows you the difference in science and how we have to be very careful with science in, you know, the point shoes decrease ground reaction forces when you standardize it, but when you let dancers be natural, which is how they are in the wild, it changes and there's no difference. So obviously this does require further analysis and these are discrete points. You, I would like to see this continuous in a whole dance routine, you know, so it get yeah. move away from the lab. I think this in the wild could be very valuable. This type of research in the wild for, for ballet dancers. So, so just to confirm, Jen, you mentioned that they, they wanted to kind of look at dancers in, in the wild. Can you just confirm that, that um, force plates, were were measured uh, were used to measure ground reaction force. Was it still a lab based study? Yes. So this was a lab based study. So they're trying to make it as in the wild as possible by letting the dancers do their thing naturally. But if they missed the force plate, they needed three trials, uh, three completed trials uh, to complete their analysis per dancer. So it okay. was still a lab based study, and so as it's only one point in time, and and we know that you know there's lots. So this, I think, taking this study almost and just saying, okay. Let's do it over a whole dance routine or, you know, whatever um, you may need with, with the technology that is out there. Um, I might be a bit biased, but um, IMUs could be something that could answer a lot of this. Maybe not the ground reaction force, of course, the tibial shock and the tibial accelerations. Um, but that, that could be really interesting for me to see this in dances. And because we know it's high impact, high injury prone activity in dances, this could be really valuable getting a whole routine and not just one jump or two jumps because we know there's there's hundreds of them um that they could be doing yeah and especially with the with essentially the abuse these shoes take i mean i've reading the study they can go through a pair of shoes in one um in one thing so in one performance so just imagine what's going through the feet ankles shin so on yeah yeah okay okay so i mean Clearly, there was no difference between between shoe type, but did the did the authors identify any kind of key takeaway messages? Any um, avenues for for further research? Yes, so they do say so. There's lots, so they give lots of um, recommendations for future research um, for both ground reaction force and shoe conditions, and there are several specific um, issues that they want to really get the dance and scientific community involved. So but if they were looking for, and this is where I slightly degree, uh, disagree, is stronger control of experimental conditions when studying point shoes, which I understand, but, but I think we might be at that stage where you want to look in the wild and almost decrease the, the control of it and saying, you know, we've got the tools, we've got the wearables now available to us to answer these questions. Let them go out and let them act naturally and, and see what happens as opposed to controlling that environment. And you'd need a large cohort for that granted. Uh, but I, that's where I think the research should go. So you could go either way. They either be more controlled or almost less controlled and let it go in the wild. Sure. Okay. Well, anything, anything else to add? No, I, I must say, I think it was quite a good paper, quite an interesting paper. And I do recommend everyone maybe get out of their comfort zone every now and again and read, a, you know, I've, I've gone away from running football, uh, cricket, all of that research, that, you know, let me try the, the ballet for a bit. And it, it, it was fascinating. I learned things in the half an hour reading this that uh, I've never known about ballet and how complex their shoes are. Yeah. Well, no, thank you for that, mate. Um, that brings week five to an end. Um, as always, you'll be able to find the, the link to the full paper in the comments section of the post. So I hope you enjoyed it and we will speak to you next week. Cool. Cheers, guys.